It's an honor to be up here with these guys, uh, with Saeed and Will and David. I, uh, I'm a, I became a corporate citizen in the rolling 90s, you know, with, uh, I think, with David. In fact, we used to, I worked for Gateway 2000, and uh, we used to sell HP stuff. In fact, we had, we had to change our name in 2001, so then we became Gateway. Uh, but my claim to fame when I was with Gateway was that I introduced the first uh, cow-spotted mouse pad, the world's first cow-spotted mice pad. Ted Wade gave me two uh, requirements. One was to keep it under a quarter, and the second one was to, if he had to like it. Uh, so anyway, that's my um, claim to fame. Now, uh, I'm going to try and go through these slides pretty fast. So uh, uh, if I need to just tell me to slow down if, you, if, uh, if I go too fast. Uh, Trimble is about a $2.5 billion company. Uh, we are our GPS, precision GPS. That's what we do. Uh, we, uh, we started with survey. We also do uh, construction. In fact, I work in the construction group. Uh, and we also do ag and fleet and asset management and public safety. I included a safe harbor just so that uh, uh, I don't want any, anything that I say to be used against me. Um, OK, so managing licenses, there are really four, uh, four things here that I, that I want to talk about. One is the degrees of complexity, and then um, the cost of licensing creation. Because a lot of you, and, and we too, do a lot of homegrown stuff, right? And so how, what's it going to take to get past that, or does it make sense to get past that? And then the speed of licensing. Uh, the speed of licensing delivery, which is very important to us, and then the impact of theft and unauthorized uh, use. Um, so this is a couple of screens here from the Alberta oil sands, and that's in uh, north of uh, Edmonton. And uh, there's about 2,000 cat machines out there that we help monitor, and uh, 500 uh, these mining trucks. They weigh, uh, they they haul between three and 400 tons of uh, uh, material, and uh, then they use uh, these types of uh, um, excavators. This is a, a Lay Bear 9800 excavator. It weighs uh, about two and a half million pounds. The bucket on that thing is uh, 55 yards, so it picks up 60 tons of material at each time, which is about the size of a, uh, uh, of a, of a ready mix truck. So, like, yeah, each time there's a ready mix truck that goes in. Uh, so it's big. And so we have to be careful when we monitor these things. In fact, for the um, for the mining trucks, they can't stop for more than 60 seconds at a time because then all these alarms will go off. In fact, even when they, when they dump and fill, they can't be in that low zone for more than 60 seconds because then the, the company feels like they're, they're losing money. Uh, so I'm, I've got some acronyms in here. Um, software as a service, blah, blah, blah. In fact, uh, we have Trimble Products as a service now called TPAS. And so you can see all these different acronyms. We, we, a lot of times we just refer to it as everything as a service. Um, installation manager, uh, IM, OTW, over the wire, I'll talk about that a little bit, over the air, uh, which is where we really need to get to for delivering these licenses, and you'll see why. Uh, 900 megahertz is the original, uh, um, our original um, uh, network uh, was based on 900 megahertz. This is like cordless phone. I mean, it's the old cordless phone uh, system, and now we're moving more and more to, uh, to Wi-Fi, right? Uh, but then we also need a broader uh, network, like cell phone, cell. And then also, we're starting to use satellite networks, which is based on Iridium, right? The old, the old good old Iridium uh, now has become a two-way satellite solution for a lot of M2M players like, like us. Um, uh, GSM uh, is a uh, cell. Uh, GNSS, that's the satellite uh, system that gives us our uh, location, our precision, our GPS. Uh, there's also a bunch of other ones, yeah, GLONASS, and, uh, uh, Magellan, there's a compass, is the big no one coming in China. RTK, so that's how we get to sub, sub centimeter accuracy uh, with these machines. And so uh, RTK is just a reference of known points all over the site, and then they work with the satellites to, uh, to get accuracy. Uh, so, and so a lot of these, uh, they call them total stations that deliver the accuracy, and they're about $80,000 a pop. So um, it's a pretty, pretty costly endeavor. Uh, but it, it does end up being profitable for these construction companies. Uh, L-band, uh, that's a satellite, two-way satellite solution where we, can, we could actually deliver codes from these satellites. And that's just something that we want to do eventually with SafeNet. Uh, and then Trimble Omnistar. So this is a company that we purchased and that we use for, we can actually deliver. So you've got your uh, LEOs, which is your low orbiting. And then you've got your middle orbiting to high orbiting, which is your GNSS and the bigger satellites. So they triangulate between the two. We can get to about four or five centimeters uh, with that solution. 
But we, in order to get to a one centimeter, we have to have no, no endpoints on the ground. Uh, licensing in action. So here's, here's kind of how it works. Uh, we, got, we have people that go out, and you see that guy. They go out and they survey, right? And they get a, a point cloud. They get a map. And then they go back to the design guys. And the design guys, they create the design file. And then the design file then gets uh, distributed onto the machines. And so then the machines go ahead and do their work. And they can actually deliver production data back to the, to the system. And then you, that's how you kind of decide, how, or you, you make decisions on how fast things uh, are working and how productive your machines are. And so that cycle continues. And then you've got people that go out and check and make sure that all the different measurements are accurate. Oops. OK. So there's types of licenses. So we actually have all types of licenses. We have a lot of software companies for the design files. And they go on computers. And uh, they, uh, they, they can range from anywhere. Some, some software that we have is over $100,000 for the mining, for mining design stuff. And some, you know, some of it's uh, relatively inexpensive. So it really runs the gamut. And that's where we're using LDK, or we'll, we'll, you know, we're Sentinel HASP LDK. And then we're starting to get into the smart, smart devices, like the smartphones. Because they really, what, the real trick there is, at least what we are trying to take advantage of, is getting cell, getting uh, 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 delivery via cell, and then converting it to Wi-Fi. Uh, and then lastly, then we have dedicated devices that, that may have their own connectivity. Uh, so all these different kinds of license solutions that we need to uh, build into our system. So degrees of com uh, complexity. So our, uh, these operators, <laughs> when they run these machines, they have a line. It's called an, an offset line. And then they have a pitch or a slope. And that's really all they know. They're not, they're not administrators. So they're not very good at, at managing licenses. So we need to make this solution simple for them. And you can see that sometimes we make it too complicated. Uh, simplifying license management. There we go. So we need to be able to do standalone licenses. We need to be able to do auto licenses. We need to uh, be able to uh, show a, an operator or a back office what, what's on a machine and what they need maybe in order to do what they need to do for work. Um, this is an example of VisionLink. VisionLink is a system that we built. Now we use Oracle just like the others do. And we built this uh, solution in, or in Oracle. And when we originally built it, this was back in 2008, uh, you can see the, the, the map. Two years later, it looked like this. And, and now, in 2015, I don't think anyone would even try to do a, a, a map of, of this solution. So we have to move on, right? And so that's what we're going to do. Uh, we're going to take the uh, license management system out of SafeNet. Or excuse me, out of Oracle and into SafeNet, excuse me. Uh, here's the cost of, so run, some of these license systems that we, that we use are very, pretty expensive. Now, I'm using this as an analogy, but this is a guy. So those are two uh, cranes. We recently bought a crane company two, a year or two ago called LSI. They're out of Montreal. And they build these kind of cranes. Well, this is on the top of the uh, Barj Kalafi. This is a 2,700, 2,700 feet in the air. So that's over a half a mile up. So this guy, he has to climb a, a pole uh, with a rope <laughs> to get to his, uh, to get to his uh, crane cage. Yeah, so uh, the analogy here is that sometimes to try and create a license on our homegrown system is about as hard to do as this guy getting up on top of this, uh, this building. And I would not, you know, can you imagine telling someone, hey, you need to go take this, this thumb drive uh, and go up to the top of the building and then go up to the crane and then install it and then come back down. There's got to be hazard pay there. Uh, Lowering the cost of license creation. So there we go. A typical license, uh, homegrown system for us would cost a the, the code generator would be a million dollars. And then the, uh, any kind of uh, uh, hosting or any kind of uh, automated deliver OTA delivery would be another half million to a million. Uh, uh, cost of creating a license, one license is 2000 to 5000 um, A manual license order is in the neighborhood of, of uh, excuse me, $500. And then each support case is around 100, starts at 100. So it really becomes uh, inefficient uh, for us to, uh, to do that moving forward. Because we've got like, I don't know, 20 or 30 different licensing systems. You know, it's not as big as uh, much of a problem as HP had. Uh, but it's, uh, it's certainly a problem that we're, that we're having that we need to try and simplify. And we've got everybody using different versions. I mean, it, 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 there's the economies of scale that we can get to to try and get people on the same version and try and get to a more commonized licensing system. 
This particular licensing system is uh, one that we built, at, uh, home, it's homegrown, it's called Pandora. And the problem with it is, and I talked a little bit about this earlier, is that uh, there's no OTA, right? So you have to take and put a code on a thumb drive and take it, well, physically take it to the machine. Uh, so it becomes uh, cost prohibitive to do that over time. Uh, here's a machine, this is a, a bucket wheel loader. Uh, this machine is 315 feet tall and it weighs uh, hmm, 27 uh, million pounds. The uh, wheel is 70 feet uh, in diameter. So that wheel is about, what, a little over half the length of this room. Another, another uh, scenario where you wouldn't want to, uh, to go uh, put a code on that thing. In fact, here's a picture of a, a close, closer shot up. And you can see the operator in the back of the wheel, behind the wheel. And he accidentally picked up a 32 ton bulldozer and got it caught in that, in that wheel. And so they had to come and get with a crane and get it out. And so you can see, I mean, and I think, you know, not too much damage actually considering what, what happened with that. Uh, so it's another scenario where you really don't want to deliver those codes manually. So we need near real time license delivery. You can see this guy here. He's, he's actually digging a road on the side of a cliff. Um, so we, you know, and it's, I'm kind of being amusing, amusing here trying to, to, uh, to picture that drone is uh, delivering that license, but we certainly don't want to send a guy there to do that. So time of need to time of use. We have to be able to do it quickly. Uh, and we have to be able to avoid unnecessary trips, obviously. And then uh, we have to be able to, to uh, we've got, we have big dealers. And so we, we need to work through the channel. But at the same time, we need to provide a solution for our customers. Uh, so here's a, kind of a high-level flow where we want to get to. We want to be able to deliver these licenses through, through EMS uh, and deliver them uh, in, uh, over the air to a smartphone, to a uh, computer, to a, uh, de a dedicated device. Uh, so that's really where we need to get to. Um, here's an, uh, another issue is uh, impact of license theft. So here's, this is a uh, hydraulic... Uh, uh, generator, a uh, hydraulic motor, and it's got an alligator on it. This is actually in the Amazon. This comes from a cat dealer called Sotrek. And so you, can you imagine sending an employee there to uh, insert a thumb drive into that thing? <laughs> um, it's another thing that we want to try and avoid. Now, I'm using this as an analogy for theft. But we do have, uh, we've had run into experiences with theft especially um, unwanted behavior like image for virtual machine, VM uh, image duplication. Uh, we've run into that quite often. Uh, protection key replication. Actually, people learn that somehow or another they figure out how to, uh, this is, you know, this is uh, older uh, prior to SafeNet, but they learn how to uh, uh, duplicate the keys. Or uh, we've had people uh, figure out how to crack the activation codes. And so it ends up costing millions of dollars. And so it's something that we need to, uh, to do away with, right? And so we want to use SafeNet to achieve that. In summary, you know, there it is. Simplify license management, lower the cost of license creation, uh, real-time license delivery, which is very important to us. We need to try and get to that Apple iTunes thing one way or another. And then reduce theft. And then we should be able to promote our solution. Um, and we can do that in two ways. One is we, we actually have high, uh, uh, purchased about 200 companies since 2000. And we're buying a ton of software companies. And so what's the first thing you try and do when you buy a company is you try and integrate them into your, into your ERP, which is so painful. So we're looking at using SafeNet to bypass, or at least we can integrate them into the EMS first and then worry about you know, integrating them into the ERP later. Uh, oops. And then finally, uh, to sell the solution to our business partners. <laughs> so you know we uh, work with uh, partners to uh, uh, to create this uh, platform uh, for delivering licenses. We have two big projects that we're working on right now. One is the Beijing National, uh, Air new Beijing National Airport. They actually have the 10th largest airport in the world right now, but they're building a new one because they want to be the largest. Uh, and then also we're working on uh, Rihad uh, in Saudi Arabia, the Rihad uh, subway system. We're working on getting that business. And that's a, they want that to be the biggest uh, subway along with New York and I believe uh, Beijing. Um, so yeah, and we want to be able to create a platform to be able to go after these large, large uh, opportunities. Uh, one last thing. 
So this is an uh, open pit mine in um, uh, Mirsk, uh, Saudi Arabia. This thing is like uh, uh, 3,000 feet across and 2,000 feet deep. It's so deep that, that it had, creates a downdraft. And, and so pl uh, planes were getting sucked, planes and helicopters were getting sucked in there. So they had to turn it into a no-fly zone. Uh, and so that big mining truck, it takes two hours for that mining truck to get down and another two hours for the mining tr tr truck to get back up. So it's a four hour round trip just to get your material. Um, so now, uh, well, the big thing with, uh, and it's, it's now just with construction, is these autonomous trucks, right? So there's a company called Rio Tinto that we're working with in Western Australia. They have about 55 or so, and they're using those in scenarios like this, where it's pretty dangerous to have a, a, a real operator. And then uh, another company called Suncor, which is a large Canadian company, is working on 175 of these autonomous mining trucks for Al the Alberta oil mines in uh, north of Edmonton. So that's when you get into, I mean, you know, we're going from connectivity for licenses to, you know, remote control here eventually. So anyway, that's all I have. Thank you, Bill. Thanks. Thank you.